about the Burnett V05 Crafter Sewing Machine. My name is Helene Knight of String and & Story and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. The Burnett V05 Crafter Sewing Machine is a fully mechanical machine featuring 30 essential stitches, a 6.5 inch throat space, and all the essentials that you need to get started with sewing or quilting. Personally, I love to refer to this machine as an absolute workhorse. One of our affiliates, Sarah Spaceman, even sewed through 10 millimeter EVA foam on the crafter. I love that it can do anything that you need to do in order to get started on your sewing and quilting journey, whether that's piecing a quilt, making garments, sewing through EVA foam, or even quilting your first quilt. Key features of the Burnett V05 Crafter Sewing Machine include stitch length and width adjustments, presser foot pressure adjustments, needle positioning, as well as your classic reverse, tension, and of course, stitch selection. Because this is a fully mechanical machine, the stitch selection is done using these two knobs rather than pushing any buttons. You can see here that by going all the way to zero, our stitch is gonna have no length at all. And here in this range, we would adjust any length that we would use if we were making a buttonhole. From here, going through any of these straight stitches, the numbers one through four are going to adjust our stitch length. If we click all the way around to S1, we would then be selecting any of the red stitches shown here on the second dial, or S2 would select any of the gray stitches shown on the second dial. Let's do a little bit of stitching so you can see how all this works. To get started, I've already threaded the machine and put in a bobbin. There are arrows showing the path for threading the needle, and there's a diagram here showing the path for threading the bobbin. I'm using a standard presser foot sole for this stitching. Now, using these black numbers on the knob, on this first dial, I can take stitch length number two, and I'm gonna do stitch width zero for stitch A to stitch a basic straight stitch. I lower my presser foot using the needle at the back and my needle using the flywheel over on the side. And I can stitch all the way down, raise my presser foot, and cut my thread over on the side. As you can see, that's just a standard straight stitch. Now, in order to do a zigzag, I would go to stitch B. We're gonna wanna add a little bit of stitch width this time. Notice at this point, I'm using my needle in the center position. We would move that over if we were wanting to get our needle off to the side of a zipper tape or anything like that in order to make sure we don't hit the zipper teeth. Now, when I put my needle down this time, you'll notice it starts to move over to the side because it's getting ready to stitch that zigzag. That was a length of two and a width of two. I'm gonna go down to a length of one and a width of three. So you can see both a narrower, looser zigzag and a little bit of a tighter one. We can go quite wide on this zigzag all the way up to six millimeters. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, we'll stitch on down so you can see. All right, so a rather narrow zigzag all the way up to our widest zigzag stitch. Now, let's say that we wanted to use this lovely decorative stitch, making this box shape over here indicated at G in the gray stitches. So I would go here to G, and then I'm gonna click this all the way around to S2, all right? And we'll put our stitch length, our stitch width, kind of middle in to see how this stitches out together. Again, I'm gonna put that foot down. Let's lower our needle. Always hold your needle thread when lowering the needle so that the thread does not pull out of the needle and come unthreaded. Here. We were able to stitch out that specialty stitch quite neatly. Now, speaking of the flywheel, let's go all the way back around to stitch A, and we're going to do a stitch length of about two and a half and width of zero. That's gonna make sure our needle is in the center and we're gonna go straight down. I wanna talk about backing up. Now, if you are wanting to lock your stitches when you get started, you're gonna use this reverse arrow here, like so. All right, so I'll take a few stitches, hold this down and hold it while I stitch, and you can see that my machine goes backward. We never try to stitch backward by turning the flywheel in the opposite direction. That's gonna cause a big thread nest. You always wanna turn that flywheel toward you. All right, 
With that, you've seen some of the basic features of the BO5 Crafter machine. As I mentioned, this is an amazing workhorse of a machine. If you or someone you know is looking to get their first machine and are particularly interested in a mechanical model, this just might be the machine for you. Thanks so much for joining me today for this quick review of the BO5 Crafter sewing machine. This is an amazing workhorse of a mechanical machine. And as I mentioned, if you are in the market for something without any computerization, this might absolutely be the machine for you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit like and subscribe and check the links down in the description for all the resources you may need.